What do you think, Dolly? Hi. You can take your leash off now. Can you tell whose tractor this is? Jason's. His calling card is always in here. Isn't it, Dolly? So today, today we are going to be aerating our pasture. And I don't know if I can talk, hold, steer, lift, and not run over a fence post. Today we uh, brought over the Ranch Works aerator and we're going to be aerating um, the pasture ground where we wintered our cows all last winter. Um, there's a lot of weed growth, not very good um, grass regrowth here. Even though the cows have been off these paddocks for a good 60 to 75 days, we are going to see if we can't grow some more grass in the process. We're going to try this. Um, I realized after... I brought over my regular non-mount. Uh, Jason has no uh, metal in his tractor for me to hang you guys out with. So obviously we are demoing more of the ranch work aerator today. And I don't know if I can talk, hold, steer, lift, and not run over a fence post. So this may be a little bit choppy. But what we're doing today is demoing this on our pasture ground to get more grass like the aerator is designed to make more grass and actually we came we brought it over here we essentially we got this demo for our hay ground our hay ground however is not that compacted like our pasture ground because the cows are always on it even though we give it a break the cows are just chomp 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 so our hay ground was in really good shape so we're really focusing on getting our pasture ground um choking out these weeds this field is awful we're gonna fly the drone around you guys can see what's happening with this in different clips but the main goal here is to break up that compaction get better root system choke out the weeds grow better grass and just have beautiful beautiful pastures um, I may get Jason in here. He's flying the drone for me today. So I may get him. And of course, I'm going to get Jared in. And he can talk a little bit more about what we're doing. But he just got out of his truck with his compression, compression meter. And we're already, yesterday we couldn't even get in the ground. Today, we got it. So I'm really excited to see what this does. Work. Here we PSI just barely gets in the ground. Move over just a little. Try it again. Oh, it finally breaks through. But if we come over here, so you're aerated. Till we hit rock, it just shoots right through. It just shoots right through. It never hits 300. Just from here to here. And that's four feet, five yep. feet. Wow. Not, did not aerate here, so we're talking about the same ground. This is the exact same ground. Right here is 300. Barely can get in. Yep. Can we go over a foot, two feet? <sighs> Starts to go in. And we just literally, we're walking five feet. And then just... Wow. What do you think, bud? Can you pull them up? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make some grass. How, how does that do that, like... Right there though, like just by doing that. Is it just letting air in the ground? When it hits and it just busts it up, it just loosens the I soil. So I seen like I was gonna bring them, but I had we get like the progressive cattlemen, progressive forage, and y'all are in there all the time. Yes, sir. But so what's the difference in between a single uh drum and a dual drum? A tandem drum like you've got the spiral going one direction. Yep. On a tandem drum, the second drum is the opposite spiral, and then they're offset like this. I, I, I noticed that. Now they can be run parallel, but they're mainly, you run them offset, 
and you load those down really heavy and that's for brush management for doing if you can drive over it it'll yep. chop it up and bust it up i got you you can aerate with those if you run them parallel and lighten it up because you if you're aerating you only want to get that three inches penetration yep. but when you're doing brush management you want that massive weight so it hits and chops and busts it all I up. I got you. So with the, the opposite spiral and the five degree offset front and back, it, it chews yep. up just like an offset disc would. Right. Break it. It's pretty cool, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you could drive it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just up and down. Hydraulics up and down. That's all you gotta do. Dad wanted me to drive Christmas truck over. That's so today Jared gets to drive with me, which could be just as bad as Jason, huh? So what are we doing? Like, what are we doing this for? Well, I know what I'm doing this for. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to like get my pastures better. But in the midst of it, like, what are we like doing? Forward. We're loosening up the ground. Yesterday when we probed, we couldn't get the probe. In some places we couldn't get the probe in the ground at all. And so we just probed over where we'd gone across. And I was able to get 10 or 12 inches of depth with the probe before we hit 300 PSI. When you hit 300 PSI, you become root bound. The roots won't. They can go through it, but if it's easier path of resistance, they'll, they'll just hang a left and you get root bound. Yesterday we were getting 300 PSI at about a quarter inch. Now we're getting it at 10 and 12 inches. So it's a much better, get a better root structure. It's easier place for them to grow. So there's some some weed patches out here, and we're chopping the weeds as we go. Those weeds will not come back because we're chopping them off with the stem. Then once your root, your grass production increases, it's going to choke out those weeds. So it helps in grass production, of course, but it also works as weed control, which in turn gives you better grass production. So ideally we came out here thinking we were going to do all this on our hay ground, right? We really thought we were going to have hay ground. We up. thought the hay ground would need it more. As we tested, your pasture ground was more compacted than your hay ground. Your hay ground is actually really good as far as compaction. Now next spring when we come back and do it again, we will run it across the hay ground for root promotion because we'll cut through the root and rhizome and then it'll once they start to reestablish they'll sprawl out and grow deeper. So will I cut my alfalfa and then you'll come out or will I wait and wait on my first cut of my alfalfa or so we just going to kind of time it out with the weather? Depends on weather. We want to do it like right now we're getting a, we're getting a, a good test but if this ground was really dry we would really be shattering that ground down deeper. It's because we had 10 days of rain. Yes. Like, and it's just now finally, like, we've been here two days, and it's just now starting to really be dry enough. Yeah, these, this is not optimal conditions, but it's doing a phenomenal job, way more than what I thought it would do with as damp as the soil is. And it's really, I mean, if you look over here and look what it's done, just knocking the weeds down. Yeah, it, it, it's it's going to really promote, and, and you got a lot of clover in here. It's going to sprawl that clover as well. Yeah, it looks good. I'm excited to see what it does. The pasture that we were on right now, this is where we wintered all our cows and we had all our calves born in the spring. So it had a lot of hay put on it. It had a lot of a lot of stomping down. We never really got mud season too bad last year, surprisingly, because it was so cold. It's it, the ground just stayed frozen for so much longer. Right. As many cows as you packed in here during cabin season, you just got to think about, you know, even if you just said it's a thousand pound cow, it's just they're constantly stomping and you're going to move a hundred of them in here. Yeah. And it's just going to compact that ground. Yeah, because the way we have our paddocks set up, they're set up for six to eight acres. So even though we have 15 paddocks, that's a lot of feet and a lot of hooves yep. on a small space. It looks like a lot of big. Well, it looks like a big space until you start thinking about the soil and nutrition and the compaction all together. And, and all of the weight of that cow is on, you know, four small hooves. So it's just, you get a lot of compaction from from cow. Sorry. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like what it's doing, knocking those weeds down. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he does on the weed pressure. Didn't even really realize that you look over here and you look over there yeah, and see it's what a, it, it's a whole different. Yeah. The really nice thing about this is we are not damaging any of our plants. So, like, our grass is still here. We'll still be able to graze it. I didn't tear up the alfalfa at home. Well, maybe a little bit, but it, it's not going to hurt anything. These plants are still here. We're just making them better, bigger, and giving more life to our soil. Yeah, when, when snow falls, it, it turns into ice in the air. It pulls nitrogen out of the air. So when it hits the ground, it's water that has, it has more nitrogen content than your regular water. So when that melt, when it hits and the melt rolls, instead of rolling off and going to the creek, all that good nitrogen is going to go down back, in the, into, the back into the ground. Because you have, I mean, if you just look out here, you've got all these slots in the ground. If you had a heavy melt, it's going to want to go that way. But it's going to go down because you've got all the slots the in the ground. You utilize that, that water. nitrogen water. Didn't know you were going to have a science lesson today when you didn't have school, <laughs> yeah. huh? Or a quick heavy rain, too. Yep. Some of your weeds are like, they're going to want to eat them as well. Because you know, they like. Have different nutrient values. I mean, that's rest. red clover there coming. Right there. Right there? Yep. Yeah. Red or white. It could be white too. See the gauge really go, but then as soon as it goes, yeah, it drops. It's, yeah, when it gets right. that's the cow pies. But that, what I was saying is like there was no kickback here. Like it's just a straight line. Like it gets the dirt drier here. Yeah. Like there's no residual soil coming up at all. It was like I couldn't see anything off here. I'm like, oh crap, did I go over that? But I guess I did. But yeah, there's cow pies there. I'll break it up. Yeah. But hopefully you might we may have to put you in D. Well, aren't you glad you were out of school today? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see anything when you hunted this morning? No. No. Didn't see anything. Anything? No. 
Well, you gotta get in a line here, just like brush hogging, but you can't cut yourself too short. Now, throttle up a little bit. No, it, throttle. How you doing? Good. Good. Yes, put it in three. The faster this goes, and I've been running about nine, but you're, I'm not gonna let you run nine. But the faster this aerator goes in cutting and slicing the ground, the better off it is. Have you learned a lot from Jared today? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about pushing that until you get to the end row. Just like you're, when you're brush hogging, you have to pick up, well, it's okay. It's just like when you mow the, um, with hay, you gotta pick up at the end row. Okay, so back down and pick up. So pull your green lever back. That's your hydro. Now turn. Yep. There you go. And we're gonna leave this little test strip down there, but make sure you don't turn too short and clip your the wing there. Okay? Um we're gonna go up. We're gonna see if we have enough time to do another paddock or if we're gonna drop it off. And load her back up. Jared's got to take this home, and I want to go get in the stand. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a whole bunch from just watching this, hanging out with us the last several days. This is like a three-part step, so if you've watched it till the end, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure to go check out Rageworks. I've got all the information below for Jared. We appreciated this. We've learned so much, and I love being able to help our grass. Leave it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe and we'll see you around. Really? You can use it on three points. So, did you learn a lot today? Hey guys. Hi, guys.